Welcome to Tea Time, an initiative of the Emerging Markets Institute. This week, we speak about innovation with our two guests, two of our guests, the EMI interns, Soraya and Juan Pablo, the director of the Emerging Markets Institute, Lourdes Casanova, and a new guest, Bruno Lanva, the director of global indices at INSEAD and co-editor of the Global Innovation Index. Thank you all. Thank you, Judith. So, Bruno, thank you for coming. What is the Global Innovation Index that was just launched at uh, Cornell Tech in New York on July 10th? Well, the Global Innovation Index has become the uh, global benchmark for comparing performance of national economies with regard to innovation. Uh, what we launched uh, yesterday in New York uh, was the 11th edition of the, uh, the report. So it is now a well-recognized uh, publication. And its originality or its uniqueness um, is to be um, uh, seen as the f from sorry Continue. the um, stems from the fact that it is a holistic measurement of innovation. It doesn't look only at patterns and trademarks. It looks at the conditions by which a country can become an innovator. Which institutions are behind besides Cornell University? So this is a joint production of uh, Cornell University, uh, INSEAD, and WIPO, which is the World Intellectual Property Organization. That is the body of the uh, United Nations that looks like uh, looks at patents, innovation, uh, and trademarks. So traditionally, in the rankings, the best countries are always those with the highest GDP per capita. So the usual Europeans. US, of course, Singapore, but more recently we have seen emerging markets such as China and Korea doing much better. So could you please tell us more about the presence of emerging markets in the ranking this year and why they are doing much better? Clearly, the uh, Global Innovation Index uh, has been trying since the beginning to be global. That is to uh, include not only the most advanced countries in terms of innovation or GDP per capita, but also emerging economies and even the poorest countries. We want the report to have a message to deliver to all of them in terms of improving the strategy. And we've not been disappointed. That is, every year we say uh, the innovation divide is still there, it still exists, it's still a strong correlation between wealth and innovation capabilities, but we see that divide being reduced continuously. We also see very exciting signs in all parts of the world. We have uh, this year again regional champions. We have countries like Chile, uh, Mexico in Latin America, very dynamic, Vietnam, Thailand in, in Asia and the Pacific. We have Kenya, South Africa in the African continent. So all these activities, all these countries are not showing just the fact that they can improve. They're also showing the way to others about how innovation capability can be improved. And the star of the report last year and this year was China. China has now broken into top 20, uh, number 17 in the world. So China has become a true innovator. And that's also one of the uh, signs that other emerging economies are taking mm -hmm. that encourages their effort in that area. Mm -hmm. So we have here with us two students who are undergraduates at the University of Los Andes and spending the summer uh, doing an internship here at the Emerging Markets Institute at Cornell. Thank you so much for your contributions. So Juan Pablo, Soraya, you are about to start your professional careers. What are your concerns regarding innovation? Okay, uh, my concern would be more related on how uh, innovation uh, will tackle very important social issues. And uh, such as poverty and such as um, um, education issues, which are um, very happening right now in developing countries. And so, um, are we opening more the gap with innovation to inequality, or are we using it to reduce the gap? So, that's the main question and, and something I'm concerned about. <laughs> maybe? Yeah, to, to uh, first thank you for expressing it so clearly, which I what I think is not only the concern of uh, the new generation, the people mm -hmm. coming mm -hmm. to the labor market, but increasingly the concern of uh, uh, the establishment. Uh, people have realized that 
uh, if growth is not inclusive, uh, it is not sustainable. Um, what I mentioned earlier about the Global Innovation Index remains. It's a holistic uh, view of innovation, and therefore it includes as many hard indicators, as it includes soft indicators, by which we try to measure the feelings of the people and whether their issues are being addressed, the situation is being improved by what's happening on the field of innovation. We also insist very much on the fact that if we look at the last, uh, let's say, 30 years, most of the innovation have not been technological innovation. Most of the innovation have come from business model creation, they've come from social innovation, and they've come from political innovation. So for us, this is very much part of the innovation landscape. And last but not least, um, we don't have enough variables yet to measure the social impact of innovation. That is, is innovation creating jobs? You might say it's destroying jobs because of automation. You might say it creates jobs because it gives people new opportunities. We have, for instance, looked uh, this year under the theme of energizing the world with innovation. We look at what's happening in the area of sustainable development and energy. And we found that, indeed, the production, storage, transportation, and usage of green energy could generate several dozen million new jobs. Um, do we have the data to actually document that from every country? I would say not yet. But we encourage all of you students, researchers, <laughs> to bring new data to us, and we'll include that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, 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 yes, um, with also Soraya, we have been working and study cases, and uh, she has been doing research in an important Chinese company uh, which produces energy. So um, because of the, one of the issues of these um, global index on, is uh, very focused on energy, so if you'd like to share your... Okay, well, uh, we have in the Emerging Markets Institute, we have been researching about the State Grid, that is a state-owned company, uh, utility, the largest utility company right now in the world, and the second biggest company by revenue. And State Grid has, since 2008, I think so, um, has started to like invest in innovation in order to uh, fa uh, foster the development of green energies and the development of grids that reduce the line loss. So this, this innovation helps the decrease of energy um, losses so we can like improve the quality of the, of the energy transmitted and also reduce cost. So however, I think that there's still like some things to foster and not only companies like China, but also in all over the world and around emerging markets, I have to think about what are the policies and what can we do to implement like the insights from uh, reports or research at the Global Innovation Index in order to really apply what we have discovered in this in the emerging markets. Yeah, the, this is the, the example you were describing of a Chinese company active in that area is, is a perfect example because you have an active player from an emerging economy who practically overnight becomes a global player. And we're going to see more and more of that in the, in the future. The green economy is one of the areas where it's going to, to happen, not the only one. Um, how can an instrument like this be of value in that context? I would say indirectly because the critical elements you would need to develop further this kind of companies are microeconomic type of instruments. You will need to know what kind of support, what kind of action, what kind of recruitment are critically important for these companies to continue to grow. What the uh, GII provides is a global benchmark tool that allows you to compare the uh, performance of national economies. Mm -hmm. The reason why I say the effect is indirect is that this kind of ranking uh, creates buzz, it creates discussions, it creates controversy. Um, and the entrepreneurs in a particular country can go to their respective government and say, look, this is how you look to the outside world. You may look good, you may look not so good, but we can do something that will improve your position. So whatever these people think or can do at the microeconomic level will be influenced by the image that is projected at the more macroeconomic level. So this is one of the reasons why we have the GII. And as a final question for both of you, um, I would like to, uh, I found in this index, uh, Colombia is for the first time ranked in the 20 countries um, that outperform relatively high compared to the development. So um, can you 
But first, I can explain uh, much more or a little bit how is these uh, 20 economies who like perform, uh, perform very high in, the, in this index and um, how are emerging markets getting more into because South Africa as well was ranked for the first time in this top 20. So how, what do you measure in this uh, category and why are emerging markets getting in? Clearly, the, uh, again, we don't have an extra 45 minutes to develop all the reasons <laughs> why. Uh, because every country is, is special. That is, you need to go deeper at the level of the pillars, sub-pillars and variables for every country to really understand what explains the performance. But in the case of Colombia, I think there are three elements which are very clear. There is an internal Latin American dynamics. Okay? So uh, what happens in Colombia cannot be delinked from what's happening in Brazil or happening in Venezuela. The, there's a number of, of uh, neighboring countries who have a strong influence on what happens or does not happen in a country like Colombia. At the same time, and, and this has not been very exciting, I would say, altogether in terms of growth, uh, yet, in terms of innovation, um, the peace process in Colombia has allowed a number of energies to be liberated, to be put to better uses, uh, and hopefully it will, be, it will be pursued. And we're going to see consequences at the level of education, at the level of job creation, and at the level of innovation. So for me, Colombia is a very exciting example of a country that had all the, the elements, the tools, the ingredients to become a high performer on the side of innovation. And the fact that it is what we call in the report a high performer in innovation, that is ranking higher on the index than what GDP per capita would suggest, okay. is an indication that this is really happening. If I may, I would like to add that, as Bruno was saying, the ranking is highly correlated to the GDP per capita. So then also the framework has inputs. So what are the necessary conditions in terms of context, in terms of investments in R&D that will produce the right out outputs in innovation? So we want, at the end of the day, outputs. What happens? So very often, emerging markets don't perform as well, neither because of their GDP per capita, nor because they are unable to efficiently use the resources they invest in the inputs. A case in point was Brazil. Brazil has, has improved this year. So Brazil has improved. It is an, an example to follow. And again, Colombia as well. So that means what, do, what is necessary to be able to use the resources better? One is monitoring. Second is long-term planning, medium to long-term planning, and then monitoring to be able to adjust the policies. And that's what some countries have started doing it very well, and definitely Colombia, Chile do very well. Brazil is improving in Latin America, and we look at China, and that's why China has jumped into number 617 this year. China is one of the most efficient countries in terms of how they are able to translate the inputs into outputs. So uh, we are running out of time. Thank you so much. So here you have the Global Innovation Index. Thank you, um, Bruno, for being with us, for traveling from New York and sharing with us the views of uh, how Global Innovation Index can, the, the framework can help countries to uh, improve their innovation policies, a benchmark. And thank you, we like to hear the views of the younger generation worried about social impact and worried about green energies. They remind us all, all the time so how important these issues are for emerging markets where usually poverty is higher and usually pollution is higher. And we need to remind ourselves the necessity to save the planet and, of course, uh, in inclusive growth. Thank you, Soraya. Thank you, Juan Pablo. And thank you so much, Bruno. And looking forward to working with you and collaborating with you as well on the emerging market side and innovation. Thank you. Thank you.